and the first shift continues six, um, 8.36 here at WRMN AM 1410, WRMN Radio on YouTube. It's a Thursday morning. We are about a day. Mm, let's see, 8.36, 24, 29, about 29 hours and 24 minutes away from the ribbon cutting for um, the new High Haven Dispensary, which is opening at 15 Clock Tower Plaza in elgin and it is coming up um and the grand opening is saturday nine to five and the ribbon cutting is tomorrow and maja is here to talk about it i didn't dare try to even pronounce your last name maja welcome to the show hi good morning thank you it's maja solomanji i'm the ceo and founder of high haven dispensary and i'm really really happy to be bringing it to elgin she said maja too hard to say (laughs) something like that well uh welcome to the show on this uh thursday Uh, it's been i know you've been in the studio here but it's been a long time ago um, and um, this is a situation where this weekend is a grand opening that's been in the works for a long, long time, right? Finally, it's the beginning, but it's the end of a long wait for the beginning, right? Absolutely. We've been working on this project since 2019, um, really hoping to get a dispensary into Elgin for a very long time. I think the community will be um, very happy with how we operate and just the benefits that come financially from having a dispensary in town. So really, really exciting. So the ribbon cutting um, is tomorrow at 2, right? And then the, the actual grand opening itself is Saturday from 9 until 5. That is exactly right. So tomorrow ribbon cutting and then Saturday is the big day. Um, you know, first 100 customers get a free swag bag. We have a lot of cultivators that are coming to just educate and be part of the support. Um, we have a, you know, after party happening at Vern's Lounge, another woman-owned business. So yeah. happy, um, happy to be partnering with them. And so... Come check out the store. It's a great time. We are offering 40% off for like the first two weeks of business just to get people. All we ask is you join the loyalty program and come come share, you know, learn more about what we do. What are, are going to be the like general hours? Do you know offhand what the general hours are going to be over there? I do. I do. Yeah. Our hours are um, long. They're from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And then Friday and Saturday, we're from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., and then on Sundays, we open at 10 a.m. and then close at 9 p.m. Okay. So a little bit different from day to day, but pretty long hours most days. Absolutely. And, and open seven days a week. Sometimes businesses these days don't open on Mondays and Tuesdays anymore, but, but this uh, High Haven is going to stay open seven days a week. That's exactly right. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we offer lots of medical patient discounts and veteran discounts and things like that. So the community, um, as much as it is a recreational store, also people come for medicinal use and that's uh, part of why we stay open. So um, how, why are you involved? Now, before we, before we get to that, though, uh, let's talk about the journey that got you to where you are at, uh, at, at 15 Clock Tower Plaza, because <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't the original plan, right? I mean, that's, I'm glad you're down here. Um, I think it's got uh, some good potential for the combination of a, um, a dispensary and the things that could help downtown Elgin with. But that wasn't the original intent. It was going to be over on Randall Road, right? That's exactly right, yes. We were planning on being uh, on Randall earlier when we first went through this process. Um, you know, the lease didn't really work out. The, um, the landlord there and the company, we couldn't come to an agreement on exactly how to make that work. And there were some concerns around parking and things of that nature. So we really feel this is a great location for us to be at. There is so much parking. It's in the hub of the downtown. It really feels like we're very much connected right to what's happening. Yeah. You know, the casino is nearby. Down the street is all the bars and the restaurants. And really things are walkable. And we've got, you know, the great Butera location there. And, and just so many, so many businesses that I believe strongly will end up seeing so much more traffic because we're there. So I think that entire corridor will, the entire shopping area will really see a lot more business. Well, and I think if downtown eventually is going to be the success that we hope it is, um, it's got to expand its borders just a little bit. I mean, we need to have, we need to think of the north, uh, the Nina neighborhood is downtown, and we need to think of that area around Clock Tower is downtown because more people need to live in these areas and patronize our downtown area. So we need to bring it all together. So even though you're maybe not in the heart of downtown, might as well call yourself downtown because we want to stretch it a little bit, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And all the benefits for that come to being a downtown business, you know, being part of the farmer's market and really having, um, you know, relations with the DNS. And so it just really is a, is a, is a great part of the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're an Elgin person. Um, you grew up in Elgin, right? 
I grew up in Elgin. I'm an Elginite, I like to say. Elginite, yeah. <laughs> Elgin person is not the way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, you know, I mean, from grade school on to Larkin and uh, even some years at ECC. And so very, very involved with the community here. I also early on worked in in Elgin and uh, had a career over at the Manor Care. At that time, it was Manor Care, a skilled nursing facility, so did health care here and really was involved in a lot of the senior service associations and things of that nature. Yeah. Well, you have anything over at uh, High Haven that can help the Larkin football team? They, <laughs> they haven't scored a point in three games well, this unfortunately, year. Unfortunately, they're not 21 yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but you know when they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so what inspired, why are you involved in this? I mean, you're, what, talk about your, your background a little bit. What makes you someone who, for lack of a better term, is, is an expert in this sort of field? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I started my career in healthcare, and I did about 15 years there. Um, really a lot of, um, you know, public health work, understanding policy work, helping hospitals and skilled nursing facilities and step-down facilities understand what it looks like to rehab and what reimbursement looks like and things like that. Anyway, it was mostly business development, and um, in 2014, when cannabis was was made into a medical program in Illinois, I decided to leave an executive level position at my career in healthcare and come over to cannabis. I truly believe that there is a bright future for it, and um, and uh, really wanted to help a lot of patients getting access to the medicine. And so I started a program, worked for a large company at that time, small company. It started in, in 2015, and um, they had four dispensaries here in Illinois. And I w had the good fortune of helping them open their four dispensaries here in Illinois, but we expanded to eight at some point in Illinois. And then I watched that company get 47 licenses nationally, help them put up stores in Pennsylvania, help them put up stores in Maryland, Ohio, Oklahoma, Michigan, you name it. So I had a lot of great experience and, and had a big company backing. So we were one of the first largest cannabis companies really to operate in the state of Illinois. Um, from there, I learned the ropes extremely well, and in 2019, I went out on my own, applied for licenses, and had the good fortune of, of winning five licenses in a lottery system um, hmm. for the application process. And then here we are, a uh, long road, but you know, getting the stores financed, getting the right team together, and, um, and really being able to be diligent about the process of, of how to open these stores. So we've become an expert at it. We've done it several times, but um, for, you know, we have a store in Darien, High Haven Dispensary store in Darien. We have one in Normal, Bloomington that just opened, mm. and, uh, and then this is our third in Elgin. Well, I, I turned to my friend Artificial Intelligence to come up with some questions for me to ask you today, and some that relate to me, I'm trying to pick the good ones here, that I would ask anyway. Like, for instance, I don't know much about it. Um, going to a, um, a, a dispensary has not really been my thing over time. So this is going to be something that maybe I'm learning about for the very first time. And um, so how would you plan to educate your customers about cannabis and its benefits? Because I think a lot of people um, probably in the same boat that I'm in. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, you know, I always think that the new to market, the you know, new user coming in for cannabis is a really interesting person. They have, they spend the most time with our bud tenders. They come in and they are curious about what's on the packaging and they're curious about the, what the products are and typically they're looking for something that is a um, low dose. So we explain how cannabis works in the body and we've got materials. If you walk in through the store, you know, the first thing you'll see at the front reception is of course all of you know, this interesting, fun stuff, but you'll see education for, for the customer. So anybody can take that. That is, um, that is the first path of it. But really, the expert behind the doors are your bud tenders, is your dispensary staff. These are people that are mandated by the state to have at least a minimum of eight hours of training every year. Now, we give them way more than that. Every cultivator that comes in gives them more training. State regulations change. We give them more training. But, um, but really, we also give them something called responsible vendor training. So the education really starts with our staff. Once our staff is well educated, they understand what's going on, they can have these meaningful conversations then with the rest of the, pu you know, the, the public who comes on in to, to shop. Some people will come in just to ask questions. They're curious about what's happening, and we welcome that too. Um, it doesn't have to be, uh, we'd love for you to come and try the product, but get comfortable with what we do, understand how THC works in your body, 
and how it can affect your day to day. And, and if you think it's effective for you, then this is a good product. Then come on in. We'll, we'll teach you more about it. So the the people that are going to teach people more about it are called bud tenders. That's that's right. Nice. Exactly. Bud tenders. We have, of course, a general manager at the store. We have people who are uh, agents in charge. So everybody who works at a dispensary is uh, you know background check through the state. Um, they have a special badge. You have to display your badge at all times when you're in the store if you're an agent working. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting process. Hmm. So what are the types of products that are offered at a cannabis dispensary? Yes, absolutely. So yeah. we have all different categories. Um, you know, flower tends to be the biggest category, which is the bud of the plant. That is typically what people will put into a pipe or what they'll roll into a joint or something like that. And so flower, all sorts of different flower products. They come in, you know, eighths. They come in in, um, in quarters or they come in sometimes, you know, half ounces. Um, so people can purchase that. We also have pre-rolls, which is a big category where it's already rolled for you. You don't have to roll it yourself. Hmm. It comes in a five-pack or it comes in a single pre-roll. We have edibles, which is a huge category. And, and, um, and you know, that is basically anything from a five-milligram dosing, sometimes two-milligram dosing, um, all the way to maybe 50 milligrams of dosing. We also have beverages, so you can drink your cannabis nowadays if really? you'd like to, which is very interesting. Mm. Yes, and there's also concentrates, dabs, vapes, things like that. So, you know, there's a plethora, but what's interesting nowadays, you can also find products that are topicals for aches and pains that are, you know, joint pains. You can get patches, which are just, you know, slow, low dose coming in through the body through like a um, skin softener that kind of helps to absorb the the THC contents or the different cannabinoids so we've got so many different things even you know even uh, like um, like personal lubricants are on the market nowadays so it is just a huge plethora we see people with baked goods olive oil I mean you name it and we can infuse it <laughs> really so you'll have all those different things we will yeah we have a big big menu selection we try to pick I mean like you know even even some popcorns cookies things like that people can find very very different select items good thing with us is we're local and we're uh, you know small business owners so if there is something that is really enjoyable and can be found at a different dispensary and we don't carry it we can put in a special order and, and have it in the store so um is there like you have gummies we do we have gummies, gummies actually too? that's the edible market yeah absolutely okay. so anything that's edible gummies are part of that huh so um i have a comment on youtube uh wrmn radio on youtube from k i don't know if you can make sense of this comment or not but it says are you medical if not why not? Yeah, that's a great question. Okay. Yeah, that's a really great question. So um, I'd love to talk to people about this. So the state only issued adult use licenses for this last round of dispensaries. So the state won't allow us to actually offer um, a medical program. However, at High Haven, we have decided that it is in our best interest and in, in the patient's best interest to be the, the, to be able to serve them medical products and to be able to offer them the medical discount. So what happens is if you go to a medical dispensary, a medical patient shows their card and they're able to receive no tax or a tax benefit. So they don't have, um, their pricing is a little bit better and they might have access to a few different products. So what we've done is we make sure we curate products that have medicinal value and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and discount the patient that medical. They just have to show the same card, but that's seven days a week as well. It's, uh, you know, anytime you come in, if you're a medical patient, you can shop at our stores. We just end up taking that out of our bottom line instead of the state helping us with that. Oh, okay. So they would get, so if they come in, you're not a medical dispensary, but the products they can get from a medical dispensary are the same, basically? Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I, I usually suggest like all, all cannabis is medicinal, depending on how you're using it. If you understand the cannabinoid content and the THC percentage, you will know how to dose yourself for the ailment or the symptom that you are looking to relieve yourself from. So I think it's, um, you know, all products are medical, but it just really depends on, um, on the uh, cultivator and how they're making the product. Okay, and, and so I've also heard that uh, it can be a sleep aid, which a lot of people have problems sleeping at night. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, there is a cannabinoid called CBN, um, and this is just, you know, when THC tends to get a little bit older, um, it makes you a little bit more sleepier, and this hmm. is a specific cannabinoid they can extract and put into gummies. And uh, they are very effective. I, you know, a lot of the older population chooses to take a gummy before they go to bed. It's a lot easier than having to take an Ambien or something of that nature. Yeah, and maybe healthier too. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Ten before nine here at WRMN. Well, thanks for coming in. Anything else we need to, that I haven't uh, 
a cover that you want to make sure we mention today? No, we just, you know, happy to be in Elgin. Uh, stop by at our grand opening. Come support us. We are really excited to serve the community. We got one more comment on YouTube from the Sultan of South Elgin. He says, what percentage of your sales do you expect to qualify as medical sales? Um, I'm sure you have a number in mind to make sure your business model works. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that we, we, you know, all of our sales are mostly all coming out as recreational sales. So based off of taxes, they will all come off as recreational. However, we assume that, you know, most 20 to 30 percent of the people who come into the dispensary are looking for some kind of medicinal purpose for their product. Uh, so, so I think that's, that's typically what we'll see. Okay. High Haven is at uh, 15 Clock Tower Plaza, 9 to 5 uh, opening day on Saturday. The ribbon cutting tomorrow at 2 if you want to stop by and see what's happening over there. And uh, then there's a website people can check out too, right? Absolutely. Go to highhavencannabis.com. You'll see all of our stores and you'll be able to shop online and uh, have a good experience. Okay. Um, well, thanks a lot for being here, Maja. Good talking to you. And I'm sure uh, this will be the last time we'll have you in more often on a regular basis. I'm looking forward to it, Mark. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, Maja checking in, and we're talking about High Haven. We'll uh, be talking more about that as we move forward. It's 851 here on WRMN. Coming up next hour, Brian Anderson's in with his guest, Sylvia, so uh, stay tuned for that. It's uh, King County Speaks coming up next hour. Stay tuned. We'll finish up the 8 o'clock hour in just a moment. Welcome to the brand new Avid Hotel, Wisconsin Dells Lake Delton, where the essentials are done right every time. All while in the water park capital of the world.